stillness. Nothing moved but the faint, cool breeze on my skin. Even the cheering of the crowd had fallen silent in anticipation of the starting pistol. There were eight of us, all lined up and ready. All of us even more eager than the crowd to hear the cracking sound of the race beginning. Time is a funny thing. It flows on, marching to a steady rhythm, but we experience it differently. To the people outside the stadium on their way to work, things felt normal. To the people in the stands watching excitedly, the wait felt that little bit longer. They had a taste of the tension. But for the eight of us on the track, time was slow. It had practically come to a halt. We waited like predators ready to pounce. Our muscles coiled tightly like springs. We all itched to move. None of us did. None of us wanted to be the one to fall start. We held our breath. Crack! There was barely a delay between the pistol and all of us shooting forwards. We were bullets made of flesh and bone. Missiles. We launched off blocks and streaked down the track towards the finish line. I pumped my arms. Even as my feet thundered over the track, my heart hammered in my chest, pounding adrenaline through my veins. Over twenty meters, I let the air steadily leave my lungs. Then I breathed in sharply and powered forward. It was mechanical, like clockwork. A behavior programmed into me by hours of training. I was a machine with one function. Run. Slowly exhale, quickly inhale, push forward, run, faster, faster. I was aware of the other sprinters on either side of me, keeping pace. I didn't dare look. Looking was losing. I kept my eyes laser-focused ahead of me. I thrust aside the competitors in my peripheral. There was only myself and the finish line. The finish line was everything. It was the gold medal. It was pride. It was a future in the Olympic team. It was mine. I kept running. At the end of the 100-meter track, my future awaited me. Which future it was depended only on how quickly I got there. I left the halfway point in the dust. I was nearly there. I could feel it. I willed my body to move faster. Through my running shoes, my feet slammed into the ground, propelling me forward. Each step was an impact energy pushing into the ground and shooting me away and onwards. A near silent explosion between soul and track. Thirty meters. I strained. My muscles burned beneath my skin. Twenty meters. Fire was in my veins. I pushed myself harder still. Ten meters. Five meters. One meter. It was over. As suddenly as it had begun, I let my momentum slowly fade away, continuing at a jog for another several feet before coming to a stop. My chest heaved, my body craving oxygen after the intense sprint I had just put it through. The burning in my limbs slowly cooled, but my anxiety started to peak. I heard the sounds of others running coming to a halt behind me. I heard the ragged breaths of the ones who had crossed alongside me. I heard the furious cheering of the crowd shouting names and numbers. I had yet to hear the one thing that mattered. I needed to hear that I'd won. I yearned for it. I could tell it had been a close race. It might have even been a photo finish. It wasn't until I finally heard the confirmation over the PA system and the subsequent reaction from the crowd that I could relax. I'd done it. I won. I felt a wave of euphoria wash over me like a tidal wave. Victory was a special kind of high. I had been tired, and soon I would be exhausted. But at that moment, I was energized. I just wanted to do the run all over again. Hello, and welcome to Stories Across Borders. Here we discuss stories told across a range of different media, books, movies, games, you name it, and we've probably covered it at some point. The only rule is that we can only discuss these things in terms of the writing. Anything like acting, animation, or mechanics is out, unless it relates directly to how the way the story is being told. I'm Daniel Radford, author, athlete, and also your host, and today I'm joined once more by John Curden as we discuss the short story you just heard, Run, written by me for this very podcast. Hello, I'm trying not to imagine someone exhausted after the sprint while the narrator says, the missile is EP. Yeah, it, it occurs to me, if this is anyone's first time listening in, 
most of the time, the, like, middle part of my list of things that I am is not at all believable. But athlete kind of is, so spoilers, no, I'm not actually one of those. That's a joke. It's always a different thing. <laughs> you used to be a bit of an athlete. Yeah, kind I'd of. Say, and... <laughs> I, I think you could, I think you could still say you are an athlete, just, um, a sickly one. Former athlete, maybe. <laughs> no, no. Former is too. Former is too final. That makes it sound like you've retired. You might get back to it. I'm holding on. Hopefully, we can we can dream. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll actually touch on that a little bit uh, when I go into go into things. But as we typically do with these episodes, uh, I think I should probably give a little bit of an overview of what I was thinking when I wrote the story. Mm -hmm. And as is often the norm, all the crickets in the background will also chime in. If you're lucky, you won't hear those. You know, you never know. They might start popping up for me at some point. They're the uh, This is the only time of the year when we have crickets over here and it's arrived. Off to a flying start. So, run. Uh, to be completely frank with you, my main thought when I was writing this was just that I very much wanted to convey action that wasn't combat. Yeah. The the majority of the action we have discussed so far this cycle has been fight focused and arguably the majority of action in media in general is also fight focused these days or in even ever really. And as we established in the first episode of the cycle fighting is action but it's not all of action. It's only a part of what action is. You know, an action scene is any scene focused around movement and effort with an incre increased pace and a sort of kinetic and dynamic feel. Yeah, much like with a lot of the other uh, consistent mechanics of stories, the majority of action you see in most stories, depending on the genre at least, ends up being combat not... Not really out of necessity, but most of the stories that we engage with are fiction. And the thing about fiction is they want stuff in there that you're not going to see and you're not going to deal with in real life for the most part to catch your interest. And which is where combat it, it comes in because combat is, for the most part, the most unrealistic and fictional type of action because the real world in most places doesn't have a whole lot of it nowadays. Thankfully. <laughs> oh, thank God uh, for that. Yeah, I don't, I've never been in a fight. Don't don't get me in one now. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, even even when it's not combat necessarily, action in media, especially the like mass consumed media, does typically seem to focus around like survival and, and that sort of thing so even if it's not like directly a punch up it's like running from a monster or a slasher or and i wanted to get as far away from combative like action as possible not necessarily not not competitive action obviously because conflict is what most stories revolve around but yeah i didn't i didn't want anything that was like fighting or trying to, or you know survival situations i wanted to do something much more mundane just to properly encapsulate that action can be a lot of different things because we looked very heavily into uh combat action especially with like the avatar episode and honestly we meandered away from action a lot with the expert episode because we were all just kind of fangirling fanboying take your pick we had we had a mix um you don't get a lot of opportunities in the modern day well at least you didn't used to to talk about x-men you probably will for the for the next little while, now that it's got a new thing that's not just another movie, but... <laughs> yeah, and even though we didn't, like, directly talk about the fight scenes a lot, one of the things we did keep circling back around to was combat, conflict, action, and making it plot relevant, you know? So even though that wasn't, like, a super focused on fight scenes episode, it still was, like, in theory, the premise. Luckily, X-Men has the advantage a lot of other series don't of the action being such an intrinsic core part of how that story functions that it's uh, it's hard to avoid and easy to keep in 
even just by talking about the characters because that's where the action comes from is who the characters are and what they are exactly but yeah so i considered a few options for non-combat kind of non-survival action things for you know that i could write about and for a long time i was actually intending to write something focused around dance because uh we touched upon this a little bit earlier in the episode but i used to be a competitive dancer so i'm very familiar with that certainly much more so than i am with the world of athletics but the more i thought about doing that the more i started getting worried that i was gonna like to that the familiarity could be to my detriment and i'd start focusing too much on the mechanics and the technique of the dancing more than the core of what i wanted to convey that feeling of movement so i stuck with the competitive atmosphere to because that is something i'm obviously familiar with and it because it's something good to center action around uh, that conflict being present by nature of who's going to win because that makes that adds some stakes to the story and stakes give weight to action and make it more interesting but i moved it away from the dance floor and onto the track instead because you know i'm familiar enough with running to ride it believably but i've never really been a sprinter or anything so i'm not so familiar that i had to worry about losing out in the vibe i wanted and getting to in the weeds with like footwork and shit yeah it is i think is a good choice to go with because it is competitive and it is it is action but even though it's not the most intense action to look at it's very good action i think to write from the perspective of simply because like Somebody who is in the middle of it. I don't know how many other physical activities I can think of more so than sprinting that while you are doing it, if you want to do it well, the more you want to do it well, the less anything but it exists in the moment you are doing it. Because it's it takes so much everything you have to try to be sprinting as fast as possible without falling. You literally can't be anywhere else thinking about anything else, being anything else, because every single little bit that's not that is going to slow you down at least that tiniest bit amount and make another opening for somebody who is just embodying it entirely. To be Yeah, there. exactly. Like, it's something that I think everyone can look at and read about and understand, right? We Most people are not competitive runners. The vast majority of us will never run competitively not really but i but we've all had a race we've all experienced that sensation of how everything other than what is directly around you and ahead of you sort of fades into the background whether it's just whether it's been yeah. like an athletic stay at school as a kid whether it's i mean most of it let's be real most of it is as a kid it's, it's either that or it's just tag or it's you know that general idea of I have to outrun the other guy. We've all been there. Can't think of any other form of competition that's more capable of being spontaneous than a race. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, they've been a they've been a part of human culture and growing up as a human, and even into adulthood. If you're a, if you're doing it competitively, it, it's just something that's so built into human life that we can all relate to it and even even if even those of us who have hardly ever run a lap in our lives i bet we've all still seen the olympics the 100 meter sprint is probably as arguably the single most uh, most watched most drawn to event in in the entire games and i'm pretty sure the oldest of all the the old like i don't know if it's formal form is the oldest of uh of all the competitions there but i think as far as a thing people just do against each other at least and like that is in an organized format at all i'm pretty sure it's also the oldest of those competitions i mean it has to be because it's uh, the only it's it, uh, like that and like grappling Th those would go those would predate yeah, they they would predate any form of organized sports like that. The cavemen were doing that shit, <laughs> and hopefully humans have been have been running longer than they've been trying to wrestle each other. We definitely have because it used to be how we stayed alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, it's 
but yeah, you, you made a good choice, and I think you encapsulated that thing I said about having to embody it uh, really well without getting lost in the weeds, because it's it's pretty easy to notice there how like he he's not aware of whether he's he's not even aware of the other people beside him until it's over other than realizing that there are people right next to him when he crosses and he's not aware of who wants until the announcement because do you think he had even a millisecond to be aware of the other racers and where they were or turn his head the slightest bit in one direction or the other without losing yeah, all that all that mattered to that person was the run everything else you gotta was, beat the fast. everything else was gone for them and i mean that i can definitely relate to like it's exactly the same thing when you like go out on the competitive dance floor right everything else ceases you can you see the audience you can hear them because you're not moving in a straight line or any of that's not quite the same but you're not thinking about them you're thinking about the routine how to do it correctly how to perform it correctly uh, you're thinking about not crashing ideally i wish other people were as big on that last part <laughs> uh yeah that'd be nice you, you would be amazed how frequently dancers bump into each other but yeah enough about that um makes sense too because both of them as like as competitive things as sports i'm realizing i think another part of that is the fact that it is it is entirely your body there are there are no i mean Dancing sometimes it on what kind you're includes doing, yeah. tools, but most wet forms that I'm that that I'm aware of is just your body, and like even when you do have a tool or two, there is like almost no external factor whatsoever from yourself, minus the ones that require a partner, and even then. It requires a very similar kind of concentration, just slightly more awareness outside of yourself. The famed um, zone. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, exactly. And it's like the reason the thing like the zone exists is there are so many other things you can do, especially competitive things that do require that external awareness. But in a lot of stuff that's just your body, external awareness beyond a very very precise point that's that's minor is uh not a weakness but a distraction yeah. at it, best it's it's such an interesting headspace because i feel like everyone has been in that headspace doing something even if it's something as medial as like housework we've all experienced that feeling of being in the zone that idea of no, yeah you just what, might not notice it if it doesn't pump your yeah, when the rest of the world drops away and there's just you and your task it like that's such an important heads like obviously it's harder for some people to get into than others but like it's such an like important state of mind to be in it, it, it's kind of when we're at our peak productivity when it's when you're going to get the most done when you're going to do it the best and it's always kind of satisfying to exist in that headspace. And I think it is more, you're more likely to get into that sort of zone doing something competitive and focused and kinetic. And I wanted to communicate that with the, with the story. I wanted it to be clear that ever, nothing else mattered but the action. Every, the action was everything. It was the difference between winning and losing it was the difference between feeling good and bad it was it for the for those short seconds i mean the, the the record is just below 10 i think so obviously it probably wasn't that fast we're probably looking at 12 seconds maybe not everybody can be usain bolt some people don't embody their last name so directly <laughs> but yeah I, I i wanted that to to be very very strongly because it lent to the idea of writing a story that was all about the action the movement the dynamic nature of it so it was just the i think it was just the right choice i feel good about the selection now, i feel good about the story itself i think i i one one of the ones that has really encapsulated the idea of what we wanted to talk about the most 
And that was like, that was part of it. Like the secondary objective, I guess, right, was that a while back I wrote an article for, the, for my site on, uh, on action scenes. I think I mentioned at the beginning of the cycle, actually, on how to do them correctly. And I was also very aware that I wanted to follow my own guidelines. Because action is hard to write convincingly. Yeah. It is. I think most authors would probably tell you that a convincing, engaging action scene is one of the hardest things to, to possibly communicate through prose. Because you don't have a visual aid in that scenario. You don't have the physical embodiment of it. So your very your writing has to capture that kinetic vibe. And that's not easy for static words on a page to do. Yeah, the further your uh the further your format is from the thing you're trying to capture, the harder it is. And although there are many ways to tell a story in which writing actually has an advantage, action is the one like big obvious disadvantage. Yeah, because it's not enough just to convey physically what a character is doing. You could do that by writing a list of dot points. It's also you got to convey the feeling of movement itself. It's got to feel kinetic and dynamic. Yeah. In fact, I think I just realized an, an, a, a trap that exists in writing action that I've never thought of before. It is very easy in reaction when it comes to action, I think, for writing. Thank you, Tito. Go away. To uh, uh, There's too much action going on right now while I try to record <laughs> this podcast. Um. Action is one of the only things you can be trying to write where you think you are writing the actual thing you want to write. And uh, no, actually, if you... Ah, oh, you... Oh. Speaking of action, uh, oh, there's a combat scene going on right my, now. That was claws in my bare back. I will be back in just a moment. I have somebody to send to prison. Okay, as I was saying before, many tiny knives prepared to Julius Caesar me into a salad. Um, <laughs> I think action is one of the only things you can write that has an inherent trap, and that it's the only thing I can think of where you can think you are writing the real thing, and if you take a second look at it with more objective eyes, realize, oh, that's a storyboard. I just wrote a storyboard for this scene. That's not action. That's an outline of what I want to happen. <laughs> yeah, I I talked about that in the article I wrote as well. Like it, what are the, what are the easiest things to fall into is to think, okay, short, choppy sentences, and end up with just a list of things that happen in the plot, in the scene, even. Yeah. Because I mean, that some of the first advice you are ever gonna get about writing action scenes is use short, sharp, choppy sentences to convey that urgency the immediacy the uh, frantic kinetic nature of it and it's not entirely wrong right but you don't want to rely just on those you the better way to do it is definitely use a lot of them but don't forget to break them up with longer sentences as well because that actually makes it feel more engaging and dynamic not only do you describe more about the way things feel which is always important but because the text has more of a flow, like an ebb and flow to it, where suddenly it's short, longer, medium, short, short, medium, longer, you it feels more kinetic and dynamic, more like actual movement. It's not just a continuous, steady drone. Yeah, honestly, despite a, I think Avatar actually is a great. I, it just hit me. I know we already did an episode of it, but I think when it comes to actually just writing action, Avatar also makes a great example for that as like something you could just imagine while writing to help make sure you stay in the right mindset for writing action because when i try to think about the action in avatar i just realized i don't even think i could imagine it in that in that bland short and scratchy straight to the point way that gets you to lose like details and stuff that makes interesting i i I can't even think of a way to shorten and bluntify that action and the way, the smooth way that it flows and all the details it has in its movements, even when I just think about earthbending. 
like I don't even think I could ever cut it down to like Toph punched the rock and the rock flew at the man. I mean, you could them. write that, but it would certainly it wouldn't con- convey the same punch, which is something else I'll touch. I, yeah, I would be, just it's a great example you would instantly realize was yeah, wrong. It would, I it would guess. be interesting to uh, read like the Kyoshi novels and see how they handle it because I expect the action is written exactly like oh. you're talking about, not badly. The good right, version where they communicate that. it quite well. I, I've not actually read them but i i just a hunch and but you touched on something that's important right one of the other things i talk about in that article and that i've tried to do in uh in run is that choosing the words you use is incredibly important when uh when choosing when writing an action scene because what you just described punched the rock and it flew at the other guy it doesn't have the right kind of impact as opposed to clenched fists her clenched fist sta- slammed into the stone and catapulted it you know yeah and that's something i wanted to do with run not punching rocks <laughs> but uh, i wanted the words i chose to use to be very evocative of certain things you know the the pistol doesn't just go off it's it's a crack because it's a sharp noise they're like predators. They're ready to pounce. Their muscles are coiled because that gives a very tightly wound imagery. This idea of they're raring to go as that as soon as that noise goes, they're going to be launching off of the uh, blocks. Which I think that's act- yep. There it is. That's actually the word I used was launched because it conveys that sense of very sudden, abrupt, powerful movement. I describe them as missiles for similar reason. They are moving at a at a high speed towards a specific target in a straight line. It conveys Yeah, both, it, they're good choices yeah, it, of words. It conveys a sense of directness as well as a sense of motion and a sense of a destination. Um and all action written well, I personally think, should be like that. Not necessarily those same words, but the words you choose and their connotations and also just their vibe. If I'm going to be completely honest, I I think I also mentioned this in the article as well, not to continuously reference back to my own writing, but, um, but it is, I I mean, that's the topic of the episode, Uh, but it is, it's a little more vague than just connotations. Sometimes it does just come down to how it feels which isn't the most helpful yeah. advice. But it's important to keep in mind because like all that stuff you described is true beforehand, but part of why a vibe is important is because you can't let all that stuff just be the only thing too. It's something um it's something critics especially nowadays make fun of a lot in writing because so many people have fallen into like being so concerned with finding the right punching punchy unique creative words to describe actions when they do write action but it's also easy for people to forget sometimes that like the short sometimes you can just say descriptors of of certain bits of action yeah that's that's the exact example here yeah it's like sometimes you can and should just directly say the thing that happens without trying to be flowery about it not to put flowery in a negative context because i don't mean it that way it's just easy to fall into the trap of being so concerned with finding interesting ways to be flowery and descriptive about sentences that you go out of your way to do that with every sentence and that's when you lose people that's exactly what i was talking about at the beginning where i sort of said you i in the end, I didn't want, to, I chose not to write about dance specifically because I was worried about getting into the weeds like that and being overly descriptive and getting way too into the technicalities of it all to the point where it lost the vibe and the feeling that I actually wanted to communicate. It's, it's exactly the same thing. And that's one of the, yeah, it's one cool. of the things that makes action tricky is knowing how to use your space and embracing silence sometimes for want of a better way to describe it sometimes you sometimes you should just say the thing as it is and sometimes you should be more flowery and descriptive and it's 
it's something that you can only really get with practice in the long run, knowing exactly when to do it, especially with the scene that's supposed to feel dynamic, but that's just uh, the way it is, you know? Uh, it's about mixing and matching, but not only the sizes of the sentences and the way they uh, flow, but also how descriptive and how direct certain things are and knowing when when to rely on the audience because part of it is that what you can convey in words is never going to be as epic as the scene you imagine in your head and that is the same for the audience reading your book as well yeah there have to be gaps for the imagination to fill in with action more so than anything else you will write yeah the things you need to focus on describing in detail aren't the actions it's the way things feel yeah, it's unfortunate, but it's almost impossible to fl to fully flesh out an action scene in writing because the flesh is where the flaws come in. For the most part, you need to provide a very nice, solid, detailed skeleton and let let the flesh be the parts that get filled in by the by the viewer. Yeah, so like you want the way things feel to be described in a like to the characters to be described in a, in a fairly fairly good amount of detail both how both emotionally and physically like if someone gets punched in the face you should describe the way that feels and same thing if, if they then get slapped a second later you should convey that that feels different it's a sort of stinging sensation as opposed to the more blunt impact you know and you should describe how the character getting pummeled feels about getting pummeled <laughs> you know is it i feel it, like is it a moment of betrayal is it do they feel their blood boiling are they angry are they saddened by what is happening because those feelings both the physical sensation and the way the characters feel about those sensations is what colors the tone of the action and the overall narrative weight of the scene. A good point to touch on too, because that is one of the few uh, that is one of the few areas of writing action where writing action actually can be intuitive, is if you know what to focus on because. Action needs to be dynamic, and a lot of how you write it really won't be dynamic, even though you're trying to be dynamic. Well, sorry, I, I should say the process of you writing it will not be dynamic for the most part, but the one area where it can be is one of the areas you need to focus on the most, and that's, well, focus. Because, like, you always... Uh, what you have to focus on going to somebody at any given moment and writing an action scene changes not just when what is happening changes but in what you want to describe and show in any given moment right because like like what you're describing there with how somebody feels while getting the snot beat out of them is is a perfect example because you th that's what you want to do in that moment you are describing some of what's happening but of course you are going to you are doing you are describing what is in service of how the character feels being punched repeatedly you're not going to be describing most if any of the punches you are going to be describing the overall feeling of helplessness how somebody is trapped you'll be describing individual impacts and how somebody feels but you're not going to be describing the person's exact the you know the aggressor's exact form or every punch because that's not the focus and i think that applies to like a lot of action sh sh scenes is you have to be ready for the the focus to shift and for you to let other things that you maybe were focusing on just a moment ago fall out of detail so you can shift to what matters because you cannot put everything in detail exactly i mean it's the same thing i did with run i did not describe in detail the mechanics of the sprint like you got you got some a few stuff about you know the correct places to breathe in and out the continuous 
running faster, 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 but you didn't get like, I stepped, I stepped again, I stepped some more, I moved my left arm, then my right arm, then my left, like, because that would be boring. <laughs> I focused a lot, I focused on the feeling of running and a, a few key important parts of that mechanical process without constantly describing the ongoing running. Because focusing on the feeling of the sprint is more engaging. And it's exactly the same thing if you're dealing with running from a dinosaur or a dragon or a slasher or something, is you're going to be focusing a lot more on what they are doing, not the individual parts of it. It's going to be the the way their heart is pumping adrenaline, the terror they feel, the keeping their eyes out all the time to see where the thing pursuing them is. In, if you're riding a scene of combat, you nailed it. You're going to be dealing a lot with describing the feelings of helplessness, the, the feelings of pain, the impact. Those are the more important things, and those are what make the action feel compelling and engaging and dynamic to an extent even, because it is faster paced to describe the broader strokes of the motion as opposed to each individual part. And that's that's where that that's yeah. where that trap you talked about exists. The ending up writing a list of events as opposed to an action scene. Because you think of the advice to write those short, sharp sentences and focus in on that, and then you lose the uh, the element of the vibe, the feeling, which is so much more intrinsic and integral. Yeah, the only um, the only time when describing action, for the most part, that you should shift even a little bit away from the exact moment you are writing is when that is a very intentional decision to show some sort of disconnect, like. What, for instance, what if while somebody is has just taken a big hit and is tumbling down a big hill, for instance, especially if it's like possibly towards a cliff, they lose focus on what is happening for a second and think of how somebody they love is doing or something like that. It needs to be something you are drawing attention to, not not just because, in fact, not even necessarily at all because it's something that person would be thinking about, but because you need to be drawing the attention of the fact of, wow, that's why is that something you're thinking about right now? That's, that's really not super relevant to what's happening right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the environment and the character. The only physical things that you should be describing in, in any amount of detail are the things that are directly integral to the scene. So if the, the terrain is is playing a very important role in the, in the action, you want to give a very clear idea of what that terrain is. If a specific object is very integral to the action, you want to keep the focus on that object as much as possible. And a, a similar rule applies to the character's thoughts and feelings. For the most part, it should be on what is important at that moment. And that's the catch to what you're describing there. What's important at that moment, as that character is tumbling toward the edge of a cliff, isn't the motion of tumbling towards the edge of a cliff. It's the realization of, shit, I'm probably going to die. Yeah, exactly. And that's, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Or like, for instance, if something like, and the reason you can get away with showing something or the reason something like that becomes important shifts so much with what is going on in the moment because like when i think of a different example if you wanted to justify having a moment like that while somebody was again getting the snot beat out of them you wouldn't want that same motivation it it would be weird if someone was just hitting you a lot for you to have a moment of like oh man i might be about to die life flashing before my eyes thinking of loved ones blah 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 and be more like that almost would be more likely to come from like dissociating dissociation yeah no like you are you are getting the crap beat out of you so much or you or for instance maybe the whole reason you're getting the crap beat out of you so much is because you have lost either the will to fight or the sense of importance of your very health in this moment you are getting 
beat up. It has to be something you are intentionally drawing your attention, the, the audience's attention to as a disconnect because the disconnect isn't, it needs to not be on the narrative level. It needs to be on the character level. This character is losing reality as they are getting beat up either because uh, that is something that can literally happen to you while you are getting beat up if you're getting beat up bad enough or because something is going on with this character that has literally made these thoughts jumping into their head more important than the fight and could be the very reason they are losing the fight or that it's happening or any number of things in that process and like again we we are gravit we're gravitating toward the dramatic the like really dramatic of life threatening or violent but these things don't have to be like if we looked at uh, this this basic story of a guy in a race or a woman or whatever i'd left it quite vague as to who this person racing actually is because it didn't matter because it didn't matter but you could incorporate something similar like that if you wanted someone starts pulling ahead of them and suddenly then they're, they're losing their focus on just running and suddenly they're becoming very focused on the fact that they are losing because of the opportunity that losing like this this race that in the story is clearly a chip in some way provides a step to being in the olympics so if you're losing that race you're losing an opportunity you're losing prestige you're losing money yeah and if you're at the front it's a lot easier to not think about your competitors because you can't see them unless you look somebody gets in front of you suddenly you can see them whether you want to or not exactly like and that, and you you're touching on something that i wish i'd written more about in the article to be honest which is how important focus is where the lens is pointed not just yeah and not just as far as motions but specific thoughts and feelings because there is no such thing as a good objective action scene it is almost impossible to write a good action scene where you can see everything that's happening it's almost a guaranteed trying to show everything you know becomes that list that storyboard we we described so the focus is pretty much all you can show and you have to be focusing on something because much like whoever is involved in the action you lose focus you lose quality, you lose success. Yeah, the further you zoom out from a specific scene or point in a scene or whatever, the further you zoom out from that, the less dynamic and more broad it becomes. Which isn't a bad thing necessarily if you're going no, if you're going like, for a broad description, observe. but that's no longer going to be an action scene. Like if you're looking at a disaster, yeah. for example, and you describe and you're describing you know the incoming tidal wave the buildings being washed away that's got motion in it it's kinetic but it's not an action scene yeah it is just a thing that is happening especially because it is bigger than the observation of any one person looking at it could be yeah if you then zoom in to one person or a small group of people the effort they are making to escape the incoming tidal wave. The sprinting, the moving, the climbing, probably a lot of climbing. Hearing the sound around and behind you. The terror they are feeling, the unwillingness to look back, because looking back is slowing down. Could be the difference between getting away yeah. or not. Like That is an action scene, and it's because of it being a close-in shot. It's because of that focus, that lens, that very dynamic, kinetic feel. And it's the same with anything. You know, if you took a broad, broad view of the racetrack, it suddenly becomes a lot less dynamic because the focus isn't shifting. It no longer has that kinetic feel. It's just an outward observer watching the track as opposed to the, yeah, you have basically become the audience. Yeah, exactly, as opposed to being in there. And this, and it doesn't have to be first person necessarily, but it does need to be focused on a sing singular yeah, the point. More, the more limited within reason, the better. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
you can do an omni like an omniscient narrator and still do this, but that omniscient narrator still has to focus the lens on something specific at any given time, shifting between the races as opposed to giving that broad view to keep the feeling of dynamic kinetic action. Yeah, even as an observer, uh, like you cannot take in everything in an action scene the less the less focused in you are on one or a couple things at a time the less there's going to be not just start as a writer but if you were literally there watching do you think if there was a big scuffle and you were just staring straight at the entire scuffle the whole time you would you would notice the guy in the corner who gets need in the ribs the person off to the side who's staring off into space and not even interacting if you're looking at a whole racetrack would you would you see the guy who falls behind maybe specifically because it turns out his shoe doesn't fit perfectly as opposed to the person who's staying in the middle because even though they're really really fast they saw people pull ahead of them and it ruined their concentration yeah i mean ex exactly what you're describing right think you're just in reality how hard it is to keep a broad focus on a large group of people doesn't work you know, it's a you know the the further away you are the broader view you've got or the broader view the camera is giving you the easier it is sure but generally speaking just the way the human mind works is that we're we're going to focus on something that stands out in a room full of people the person that attracts your attention the most is the person standing apart from the crowd and that's where the specific medium of writing comes in the most too because like that's another thing is if you did want to try to zoom out and describe everything when it comes in in writing that is just more words the only way in which seeing everything at once really works is a camera human eyes will never do that human eyes will never just take in a whole scene they're always going to focus they're always going to move they're always going to shift a camera can pull out and show you an entire scene at once but then even that that's just something that only purely works with the visual medium because even somebody watching action scenes like that is going to take in a couple of things at a time in the scene and is only going to really have the whole scene exist in their head if they rewatch it multiple times, focusing on something different every time. And even then, all that becomes is them having multiple different versions of the scene that exist in their head, which is something else that could manifest in writing, too. It reminds me of that, uh, that test, right? Where you tell people to watch a crowd of people, like, bouncing a ball or something. And they don't see the guy in a gorilla suit walk through the scene because they don't have the focus. It, it's funny, like, you can look at it two ways. And either way kind of proves the point of how important focus is. Either it's because they're so focused on the one task that they don't catch the other thing. Or it's because they're not focused at all because they're trying to see everything. But they take nothing in. Yeah, it's just one guy in one suit. Yeah, either way, it is evidence to the idea of how integral focus is to a scene and to an action scene, especially because if you if there's, if you're trying to draw attention to too many things, your audience, your reader, in the case of a written story, but also, but also in visual media, you know, the reason a one-on-one -on -one fight scene always feels more dramatic, almost, almost always feels more engaging and dramatic than a big what battle with a, many different warriors clashing is for that reason. It's harder to focus and get engaged with something on a larger scale. Yeah, no, like uh, to, to call out something that actually could have been an episode and I can't believe it didn't actually occur to me sooner, <laughs> maybe because I don't think about the action in it that much for the most part, but uh, The Lord of the Rings has a lot of great examples of action, but more important than using it as direct example, as we're talking about focus, Lord of the Rings has some of the biggest scale you could ever see in, like, any battles in 
in both mediums, although obviously there is a lot more to see of the action in the movies than in the books, the books still have that crazy sense of scale there. And when the scale gets huge and there's a massive battle going on, are you seeing an overview of the battle? No. You're following one character or two characters, sometimes three, at a time in the middle of the, of, of the battle. What is happening with them? Yeah. What is the action at a given moment? Yeah, Helm's Deep, for example, you know, is a massive battle, but we mostly just jump between Legolas and Gimli and sometimes Aragorn. Yeah. Uh, Game of Thrones does it too uh, quite well uh, in one of the later seasons, actually, where they have the Battle of the Bastards, and the entire that entire huge battle is almost entirely from Jon's perspective as he's getting knocked just senseless by everything going on around. That's him. true. The books do that really well too, especially. Um, I'm forgetting what the I want to say, the 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 battle at King's Landing with Tyrion, like it is, yeah. it is it is hard to find like better examples of like first person action in pure writing format than this tiny little man whose body barely functions well enough on a regular day-to-day -day basis trying to ride a small uh, ride a pony into a battle filled with people three times his size who have been doing it their entire lives and who are healthy like it's yeah. crazy yeah i mean same principle applies to you know a in like a a team sports event right you want if you're writing a rugby game or a football game or a basketball game whatever you, you're not gonna describe i mean you sometimes probably pull the camera back to describe the greater scope of it but mostly you're probably going to focus in on like a couple of individual team members at most and what they are doing and more likely what you're going to do is follow the ball yeah sorry number 43 but all you did was block one of the other guys from tackling the guy with the ball you're just really not germane to the point right now honestly like using the ball as your focus point and 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 also perspective point if you're doing third person that would be the ideal way to do a scene like that. Obviously, in first person, you're going to focus entirely on your POV character and their emotion. But if you're doing a third person perspective and you are like writing a scene of like a basketball game or something, follow the ball. That's where the action is. Yeah, that's true, and that's a great. Point Everyone else is just running around. It applies equally in multiple mediums. That works just as well for a for a visual scene too. The like the best scenes i can think of of people playing either football or basketball or what have you in like movies or shows i've seen are when the camera cares about the ball not the players yeah the camera will follow the ball because the action follows the ball the ball is the focus of literally everybody and everything going on in the game why shouldn't it be the focus of the camera precisely and there it is again focus and god i may have to go rewrite a new action article just because i can't believe i didn't write more about this in that article it's just like big because notes at the top probably the number Key one word focus i'm gonna say it a lot get over it yeah because more than anything that is the most important part the focus of the scene where the camera is pointing what is happening what is the focus of the narrator on third person first person doesn't matter it is what feeling is it focused on what event is it focused on what movement is it focused on and where is the focus shifting back and forward to that is the single most important part and all those other things i talk about are just about building that focus and feeling of shifting focus and kinetic action all of it contributes to that one thing. It's not just that. They do other things, but th they're contributing factors to that, to that idea of focus. In, in the Battle of Helm's Deep, the focus is on our heroes and where they are in the chaos. In the basketball game, the focus is on the ball because that is where the action is. 
And in run, the focus is on the finish line because that is all that matters to our protagonist and also all of their competitors. The finish line and when you get there is everything. Yeah. I mean, heck, we can even bring Harry Potter into this example too. Quidditch game is the golden snitch. Yeah. Yeah, say say what you want about the author, but those books basically encompass every kind of action scene. Yeah, it's true. Liter- the only thing they it, the only thing they are missing is th- literal fisticuffs. Nope, that's in I there. I mean, it's in there, but I don't there's not re- I don't think it doesn't have much and I don't think it has really any still where the fighting itself is much the focus. Even 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 like the big final battle there is like people throwing shit at each other or like throwing punches i'm just saying harry potter could really use yeah. a character who's just uh the guy from uh Ma- mashal yeah <laughs> i i choose the spell of punch good yeah i mean again don't don't care for the author at all but yeah, if you're looking for an example of a series that encompasses literally every kind of action from running from the scary thing to sports event to life or death battle it's all in there yeah yeah i'm sure there are others as well but it's the only one off the top of my head that has all of those things it's crazy rowling may be utterly lacking in real world perspective but she sure seem can seem to write a write f- 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 fictional perspective and focus <laughs> yeah focus on all the wrong things in real life surprisingly good at writing about focus uh, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, if we we could like run down the list, ironically, as dot points. Number one important thing in an action scene: focus. That defines the entire scene. Yep. Then you get to two, and that's when you and that's about the like like point there is varying sentence structure, and that mean and by that I mean the length of sentences as well as the words you were choosing. Yeah, and I would even almost put that, uh... Oh, well, never mind. I was going to say I would almost put that at three because I could put something else at two, but now that I think about it, a lot of the other stuff I can think of just bleeds back into focus. Because I was... Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's not 100% focus, but focus is a massive part of it anyways. Uh, Goal. You always... It, the goal of every scene is always going to be important, of course. The difference is, when it comes to action, the goal of your scene cannot be a metaphorical or symbolic one. If you want, I mean, it can. If you want an action scene to be good, the goal that, like the, for the most part, the goal that the characters within are going to be struggling for is a very literal, real, tangible goal. Otherwise, most of what they were doing around it wouldn't be wouldn't be action. And I say mostly because like like Yeah, I was like, we just did the X Men. Like I would argue that a philosophical or polit like political, I guess is kinda of tangible, but like uh colliding perspectives it, like proving your victory to prove your philosophy, or whatever—that's still a goal. Yeah, yeah. I just like you it, could it, argue it. You could argue it spreads into the tangible, but there's always a ta- there is also the tangible. I don't want to die here. Is it attached to that kind of conflict? Absolutely. So. I just mean you know it's like it's with other scenes. The writer can have a goal in the scene, and the characters can have a goal. But like in an action scene, for the most part, the writer's goal, the like the camera's goal is going to be a physical, tangible thing. The thing that everybody involved in the scene shares or competes for is going to be an actual solid thing. Yeah, I mean, I would still consider that part of focus, but I would also argue that the character's goals are more important to us to that specific scene than the overarching goal of the writer. Yeah, no, I, I just meant in like... Conveying that sense. Th- yeah. that's, that's true, actually. I just, it's... It has I mean, to I'm not. I'm not saying you're wrong to mention goals. Like you are completely right that every action scene, by nature of being kinetic, is moving towards a goal of some sort, whether that's metaphorically or not. Uh, I, but I, I was just thinking about it when you were talking about. It. I was like, yeah, but like 
the writer's goal is to tell X story. In the in the moment specifically of the scene, to keep that feeling, that focus, the character's goals and focusing on those are more important. Yeah, and you have you don't to focus. Want to pull people out. You have of to it. have multiple goals to think of at once too, because the character is going to have a main goal within the scene, but they could, but they could also even have a momentary goal because it still has to have steps. It's just that the step you go from step to step a lot faster in action than you would in most other like narrative forms because oh man the the for, I I keep coming back to fighting. I don't know why I've got fight brain, but um <laughs> you know it's cuz like the, the, the big scuffle going on. The guy I need the guy I need to beat is at the end. There's multiple guys in front of me guy's got a big shield uh, this guy's in my way gotta get gotta get rid of him this guy's coming at me from the side as i as, as i take down a second guy oh hey look this one's this one's got a big uh got a mace i don't have one of those maybe take that from him after breaking his arm smack the shield out of the way look i've done a thing your goal was take down the guy at the back but you gotta have your oh. moment to moment your uh, your static. Oh, whoopsie! I'm probably moving too much. Action, everybody! I I uh, I moved too much and I lost focus uh, audibly. <laughs> uh, mm. but yeah, no, you're right. The, like you could describe an action scene as moving towards a series of objectives, and that wouldn't be inaccurate. There's always the final goal, but really, you're not wrong. If you could break down any action scene into moving from objective to objective to objective to get to that last ultimate objective and keeping different goals and reasons for why the action is happening in mind is important to the focus but it's also one of the things that gives action narrative weight it's you know the thing that is motivating the action should probably be part of the focus yeah absolutely because it's definitely going to be part of some what point. the characters are thinking about <laughs> Yeah, like obviously, it's not going to be every like if you're not going to reference the that in every single sentence because that will take away the action. But the audience should be aware of why this is happening, why the mo people are motivated to engage in this scene. But that's true of everything, of every scene, of every story. It should be very clear why it's everything is happening all the time. Otherwise the story is going to be very dull because you're just going to question, why does this person give a shit the whole time? Yeah, it's just, Action scenes aren't special in that they have this. It's just important to remember they're not exempt from it. And either. it's not like you can't get distracted from the bigger goal or from a character's specific individual like greater motivations. But you have to make sure the thing is, it's not that you can't do it. You have to make sure you don't do it by accident. If it happens, it needs to be intentional what if like if yeah. somebody in the race loses focus you know we talked earlier about somebody getting in front of you or i give the example of something being wrong to shoot it has to be it has to be something you decided was important and worth showing to just go back to fighting again sorry i know but like it like if um if somebody for instance, I earlier I did the opposite of like if somebody is focused completely and only on the fight, or it isn't focused on the fight. What if it's the opposite? What if somebody is supposed to be fighting for a reason, supposed to have a goal in mind, and they completely lose themselves to the adrenaline and the fear and the intensity of what is going on, and don't act in like in line with their goal anymore? You have to. It has to be something you show for a reason. Like that's what you get in like a large scale battle is that you may you may be there on the battlefield because you're fighting for your country or your philosophy or to save whatever. But as the as you focus in and things get more chaotic and you focus more and more in on on the individual people, eventually they're just gonna be fighting to not die. In the case of run, we don't get a lot of that because as it turns out, our runner is winning. But we've all been in a competition before. If someone pulls ahead of you, suddenly the goal doesn't become, I have to win. 
to because of all these things i don't it's not i have to get to the finish line because that's where the olympic chance is it is that's the ultimate goal but you bet the focus is suddenly going to be very much just i need to beat that guy yeah you could almost say it stops being i need to win and starts being all and although you could this argue the same thing the perspective stops being i need to win and starts being i need to not lose like those are the same thing but they have very different connotations exactly because i need to win is not is a very general thing i need to not lose can mean very different things depending on if you're winning or if you're coming behind the other guy or what connotations vibe they matter to an action scene yep. and uh as we have established another word i guess i didn't use enough even though it ties it ties in with focus but of course is more directly in the focus of an author the writer of a scene intention everything must be done with intent and to a point that's true in writing in general because it's not going to happen if you don't put it on the paper there aren't actors in front of you who could do something that is off script or off model but like still it's always important to think about everything you do with intent not necessarily the intent of the writer or the the characters or the forces of anything else but the intent of the writer you can show essentially whatever you want always have to keep an intent in mind there has to be an intent behind what you put on the screen it's it's true with writing in general but i think always having an intent for every thing is a little more important in action than in most narrative scenes yeah i mean i'll add a caveat to that though that is uh whilst the intent of the writer is always incredibly important it's also something you don't want to necessarily feel in an action scene no 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 it's it's something that has to be because there that for pulls the, you for out the writer but the the writer's intent shouldn't always be in the face of the audience for sure yeah exactly uh that 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 lens of focus is and the character's focus is is going to contribute so much more to a feeling of dynamic action than the author going okay the, the make it like very clear this is why this is happening and and i don't mean that in the character motivation sense i mean the sense of i can feel exactly why the author chose to write this or this or this you want people to get lost in the movement yeah it, the authorial intent of an action scene should almost never hit you during the scene it should hit you at the end of the scene when you're thinking about it and everything has come together yeah when when i when i was writing run the the, the effect i was going for is that whilst reading it you should feel something along the lines of what the protagonist is feeling you should be in their head the focus should be entirely on the movement not on oh hey the author wanted to write a story about movement <laughs> hey that story i wrote uh run it's about there's it's it's about running surprise uh that being said speaking of movement there is currently a helicopter moving over my house and we have kind of reached the point where uh um where we can probably be wrapping things up to be honest yeah. I'm not sure how much more I could think to say about about action without going back to more specific examples of stories and stuff anyways. Yeah, which we've already done plenty of. Uh so we can we can leave this one there. I I'm pleased with how it's gone and pleased with how the story turned out. I suppose actually there is one thing we have to do, which is why I always try and do at the end of these ones where I've written a story is I sort of say, Hey, is there anything you would want me to change if I did this again? Hmm. Let me look at it for a second and see. Nothing hit me off the top of my head while reading it. Um, honestly, nothing really. I mean, I think, I think you uh, you did a really good job on the most important thing we talked about, the focus. And even as the focus shift shifted, because near the end you do get more into those short little direct bits, but that's the right time to do it. Because his focus is narrowing as he runs out of energy and he's tired. The only thing he has left to think, left to think about is how far it is. Even all the sensations he's feeling in his battered and tired body are just tiny, tiny little moments that flit across his consciousness. 
in an instant because yeah, they're that, not that important. Was, that was the idea, so I'm glad, I'm glad you picked up on it. Yeah, I think you did it quite <laughs> I well. Think, I think to myself, like, if I, if I was going to critique anything, if I was going to do anything a little bit different if I wrote it again, is that I would probably go in more into the conclusion of the race and how they felt afterwards and things like that. But because I, I didn't do it this time, I maybe I should have for the sake of the story, but I was entirely focused on conveying the action, so I didn't really think about it until after the fact. I was like, well, uh, I've got like five minutes till the episode, so I'm not going back to change it now. I think you... Not that I wrote this just today. I wrote this at the beginning of the week, but... <laughs> no, I, 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 think, I think you handled that just about perfectly. You could show that other stuff, and it would be good and relevant to the story, but not to the action, which is our topic exactly that's what i'm saying like if i was writing it purely for the sake of the story i would probably even i would i would want to include that but i was writing it very specifically to illustrate action so you know it's fine all right on, on that note then uh if you are listening to this on my site which is radfordwrites.com it is also available elsewhere uh, elsewhere being spotify and eventually on youtube when everything gets caught up um i'm still uh uploading like cycles at a time we're in season two there now so it is catching up uh and of course on said site you can also find other assorted writings uh articles and stories like run and you will of course see more of john in more of these episodes and can also Find him streaming on Twitch at Sephir, S-E-P-H-E-A-R, and uh, I believe you also will eventually be uploading old uh, old pods to YouTube. Absolutely. Well. I can't wait to see everybody there. Yeah, you heard him. You better be there. Or else. It's expected. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you and goodbye. Bye, everybody.